Hi, my name is Debbie Ng, and I'm a student at the University of Tasmania in Australia. I recently completed my honours thesis at the School of Natural Sciences, where my colleagues and I have been exploring how the behaviour and attitudes of dog owners is impacting the health and diseases carried by dogs in Nepal's Annapurna Conservation Area. In the next three minutes, I will explain our results and why they are important. Dogs have followed the human journey for centuries. Dogs can be found on every continent and have become the world's most abundant carnivore. Dogs come into conflict with wildlife when they kill them or when they spread diseases. A disease of particular concern is canine distemper or CDV. CDV can kill large numbers of wildlife quickly and suddenly and has been detected in more than 200 species of mammals. However, while studies have investigated the role of dogs in spreading CDV to wildlife, little is known about the role of humans in facilitating the spread of this disease. We visit 10 Himalayan villages and collected blood samples from more than 70 dogs with owners. We interviewed dog owners about the methods they use to care for their dogs and used a questionnaire to gather information about wildlife in the area. We use an ELISA assay to detect CDV antibodies which indicates past exposure and standard PCR protocols to detect the virus, which gives us an indication of present infection. We did statistical analyses to test the effect of socioeconomic factors and patterns of CDV seroprevalence in dogs. Our results show that 7 in 10 dogs have been exposed to the distemper virus and that 2 out of 10 were actively shedding the virus. These results suggest that the virus is possibly constantly present in the dog population. We found that most dogs were left to roam freely despite having owners, and that there was a high degree of movement of dogs between and within villages, with dogs following their owners on journeys to and from urban areas as far away as Kathmandu. Most dogs had a body condition score that was ideal, which could explain why dogs that were seropositive or infectious did not express signs of the disease. We also found that several species of susceptible wildlife had been observed within the properties of dog owners. Our models found no household or dog level factors that could explain CDV seroprevalence. However, there was some suggestion that age and location could be useful predictors. The high level of movement and mixing of dogs within and between villages could explain why we see little influence of households or village level factors on CDV exposure in dogs. In conclusion, the high rates of CDV exposure in our sample population indicate that the dogs living in Nepal's Annapurna conservation area pose a risk of CDV transmission to wildlife, which includes threatened and endangered species. But this isn't the end of our study. We will be looking at quantifying dog and wildlife interactions using an array of remote cameras to examine cross-species transmission. If you work with rural communities where dogs come into conflict with wildlife, we would love to hear from you. We also encourage you to share with us your photos and videos of dog and wildlife interactions. Finally, I would like to acknowledge our supporters and partners, and thanks to you for listening.